Energy Star rated appliances meet strict guidelines set by the Department of Energy. These appliances use much less energy to do the same work as other appliances. They do, Pete, but what if we could take it to the next level with a home that's rated better than Energy Star? Ooh, I like that, Megan, and we're gonna do that next on Powerhouse. We'll show you a home that not only meets Energy Star qualifications, but it exceeds them. We'll also show some maintenance you should be doing with your gas water heater so it lasts longer. A lot of rain means a lot of energy to power your sump pump. And we'll show you some smart gadgets that can help you detect and prevent water leaks next on Powerhouse. We've always talked about energy efficient homes, homes that use every ounce of energy in the best way possible. Well, the house behind me is called a net zero ready home, and that means it's as efficient as it can be without adding a renewable energy source like solar. Meet Paul Brundell. Paul's an expert in building homes with the highest quality and comfort while also benefiting the environment and saving the most energy. So Paul, there's more to this home than just energy efficient equipment, right? Uh, that is correct, Megan. Energy efficiency starts with good design, a good specification of products, and then the proper integration of those products within a home. So most people think of energy efficient appliances, windows and doors, but we go beyond that with how the walls were designed and built, how the attic system was designed and built, the overhangs are just some examples of details in this home. I always tell people, you're not buying individual Energy Star components, you're buying an Energy Star rated home. How do you know that this house is energy efficient? Great question. So all the design elements all of the architectural features, the orientation of the home on the lot were actually loaded into energy modeling software. So by doing that, we were able to iterate the design to optimize its performance to meet certain objectives. In this case, to get to a net zero ready home. And then we bring in a third party rater that actually comes in and inspects and test the home, and they use a blower door test as one of the, the uh, uh, test methods. And basically what they're doing is depressurizing the home and measuring the amount of uncontrolled air infiltration that's coming into the home. So the goal is to design it, build it, so that we reduce the amount of uncontrolled air changes that are occurring. And as a byproduct, we can reduce the size of the heating and cooling system in the home. So that air sealing is, is vital when it comes to the heating and cooling system. It is, it is because when you reduce the air exchanges in a home in half through good quality air infiltration management, you're significantly reducing the amount of energy you're, you're using to heat and cool your home. People may be concerned about making a home too airtight. Right, that was a question of mine. So we use what they call an energy recovery ventilator or generically a fresh air generator. What we're basically doing is bringing in fresh air from outside, exchanging the energy from inside and exhausting the indoor air outside. And we do that in a controlled fashion so we know how much air we're bringing in and exhausting out. What we're doing is managing the uncontrolled entry and exit of conditioned air. So you're paying to heat it, you're paying to cool it, you're paying to dehumidify it. And if you don't manage the, the air infiltration rate, that just leaks to the outdoors or it leaks into the home. And with it comes moistures, molds, allergens and other contaminants that we don't want in our homes. So air infiltration management is a critical element to the performance of the home. Now looking around, I notice there are no registers in this house. Uh, Why that is, is that? Correct. So that's part of another element of the design and the, the high performance thermal envelope of the home. So with good design, good thermal envelope, good air infiltration management of the home, we don't need a system that's distributing heated and cooled air throughout the home. So when you walk through the home, you notice a pretty uniform temperature throughout the home. In fact, it was at the same 
temperature as the air conditioning system was set at today. We can heat it and cool it with a centralized system and don't have to force that air throughout the home. Tell us about some of the other features that you've implemented into this home. So one of the hallmark features I like is the radiant heat. So in the winter time, it's primarily heated with an in-floor radiant heat. And that system also heats your domestic hot water. So you're only heating when you use hot water versus a traditional tank system, which will heat 24 seven, 365 days a year. We're only heating water when we need it. So another way of reducing the amount of energy we consume. Paul, something else that I noticed is that you have a programmable thermostat, which is great. But my question is, why didn't you go with a smart thermostat? So actually I did, Megan. The heating and cooling system is on a programmable thermostat. In particular, the mini splits uh, are controlled with a, a remote control. And there's actually a Wi-Fi module also. So we can heat and cool this home remotely and manage the temperature in here from our office or, our, or wherever we're at, anywhere in the world, as long as we have a Wi-Fi connection. That's just one of a number of the smart features that were integrated into this home, along with lighting controls uh, that have been implemented in here, and those can also be controlled with your phone. Okay, so when all is said and done, the homeowners move in, what kind of savings are they looking at? What kind of financial benefit can this house offer them? Great question. The energy savings are calculated to be around $42,000 in now your dollars over the life of a 30-year mortgage. Wow, that's remarkable. So you've really gotten the energy consumption down to basically nothing. That's correct. And really, the goal here is to optimize the design and the performance of the home. So if a homeowner wants to take the next step and integrate the renewable energy, we've done everything we can do on our side to reduce their consumption. So the size of that system is as small as, as uh, uh, practical to offset their energy consumption. Right, so I see where you're going with this. So for, uh, uh, for our viewers to take this note, um, it's best to save as much energy as you can within the home before investing in a renewable source like a solar panel. That, that's correct, Megan. Um, homeowners can do a, a, a range of things from their appliances to their lighting to there's practical things existing homeowners uh, can do to their homes to air seal. Uh, and really the goal is to reduce the amount of energy they're needing to condition the space. Then solar or other renewables becomes a, a very viable option for them. Well, this is great information. Thanks a lot, Paul. You're welcome, Megan. If you'd like more energy efficient building ideas, visit our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash TV. Did you know the Home Energy Rating Index is a score that shows how a home's energy consumption compares to a home built to the 2006 International Conservation Code? Any score lower than 100 indicates a home is more efficient than the standard home. For example, a score of 80 means the home is 20% more efficient than the code home. A score of 120 means the home is 20% less efficient. The lower the number, the better. Most people don't think about their water heaters until they stop working and they need to buy a new one. We've shopped for new water heaters before on Powerhouse, but today we're going to show you how to extend the life of your water heater. Meet Justin Ross. He's been plumbing homes for 20 years. He's seen his fair share of bad water heaters, but today he has come to the rescue. Justin, I didn't realize on a water heater there's recommended maintenance to extend the life of, of the water heater. Yeah, absolutely. There's a few key things. Um, one is the manufacturer recommends that you drain it down once to twice a year. Okay. Because there's a sediment from the water, uh, minerals, everything. It, it falls to the bottom, sits against that tank. You want to drain that out, flush it out. Okay. The second thing is called the anode rod. It's up here on top. It's an inch and sixteenth bolt head. Loosen this guy up and it, usually it's way harder than I'm making it look right now. You know, all right, so you get it loosened up. 
And this is, again, the anno rod. Talked a little bit about, uh, you know, it, its purpose. It's actually like a sacrificial rod. This rod, the water hardness or minerals in the water attack this rod instead of attacking the steel tank inside. So it makes your water heater tank last longer than so that just hangs down in the water, right? Yep, and again, doesn't you, touch anything yeah. but the water. Yep. Okay, and, and, the, and the water inside, as you said, it sort of attacks this yeah, during the life of your water yep. heater. And then this is made up of what? Uh, magnesium or aluminum. This is a, a good looking one. Yeah, yep. But I know you have another yeah, one. Yeah, this is out of a water heater that's Whoa. 10 to 12 years old right there. And that's typical that you might pull out. Oh right? yeah, absolutely. We I pulled them out where there's just this bolt head and it's, uh, this has all been eaten away. Yeah, yep, there's nothing left of it. The way this looks depends on your water hardness too. I mean, if you're in a city where you don't have as hard water, the anode rod will last longer, but you know, if, if you have really hard water, then you know, it'll eat this thing faster, so. Okay, and they also, you were telling, I mean, they can smell at times, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, like mostly like wells, you'll get like a sulfur, and that sulfur water will attack it, and you'll get like an egg smell out of your faucet. So there's a special rod they make for that that gets rid of the egg smell. Justin, how often should we replace this then? About every four years is what's recommended. Okay, and, and talk to us a little bit about the cost. The, the cost of the rod would be? 30 to $40 plus a plumber service okay. charge. All right, so yep. in addition, you've got to come out and, and your service visit to, to put this in. Yeah, and as we said, that getting that out is not easy. No, no, yeah, usually, uh, it's almost a two-man thing. I mean, you have to have someone bear hugging this and then another guy on a wrench with even a bar to break that, breaker bar to break that. A lot of times what we do is we drain it down a little bit so you have the weight of the water okay. even to help you out. Okay. Yeah. All right. it, but again, as always on Powerhouse, we're always about safety. So keep that in mind. I've, I've got to turn off if I have gas. I've got oh, to yeah. Shut off the gas. You have to shut off the water. You have to make sure you're drained down to a certain point. Otherwise, you'll have all the upstairs water, head pressure coming at you. Yeah. So. And, and again, we, we like to have uh, do-it-yourself projects, but this might be one to leave to the professionals, perhaps. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I'd say there's a lot of unknown hazards that could come with taking this out. Yeah. So. Uh, again, uh, it's not an easy process to change no, this out. Not at all. No, you Sometimes you run into low ceilings where you can't get it out. So the old one you have to cut out in sections. Okay. And then the new one you either have to unhook the whole unit and tip it over, or they make an anode rod that has chain links in it where to you can slide it in segment yeah. by yep. segment. Okay. Yep. All so. right. But again, the, the bottom line here, Justin, is you can extend the life of your water heater through some regular maintenance. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, Justin, some great information. Thanks for sharing that yeah, with us. Yeah, no problem. And if you'd like to learn more information about how you can take care of your energy systems, visit our website at powerhousetv.com. Did you know that heating your water can be the second largest energy use in your home? In fact, the Department of Energy says heating your water can add up to 18% of your home's use. When it rains a lot, sometimes you can hear another visitor inside your home. It's called a sump pump, and it can work pretty hard. Meet master plumber Jerry Sill. He's been in the business for nearly 25 years and specializes in service and repair. There isn't much that can surprise him. He's seen it all. Okay, so Jerry, let's start with the absolute basics. Why should someone install a sump pump in their home? Well, basically to keep your basement dry. Um, and you're keeping your walls and your foundation uh, hard. Can you go through the fundamentals of how it works and what the moving parts are? Yeah, I mean, it depends on your water table and where your house is at and where it's located. Um, the black field tile you got coming in here goes around your whole foundation of your house. The newer houses will have two, one inside the house and then one outside the house. And you'll have two, you know, sometimes three tiles, it depends on the water table and how low the foundation is sitting on the ground. And that's how you determine the location for it? You Correct. take all those things into account? Correct. If the house doesn't have a sump pump already, you'd want to go to obviously the wettest part of your house and uh, remove the floor. And then what we do is drill a bunch of holes in it and filter full of rocks. And as it's raining, it runs down your walls and then um, it filters through rock into this pit. And then the water flows into this pit, fills up, triggers the sump pump before it goes into your, sorry, going to your basement, and then we pump it up and out. And it pumps it up, up and away from your house. And where does it go when it goes out? 
a lot of people have a discharge line on it and they'll just get it farthest from their house as they possible and then it runs to the streets. Um, the newer houses will have field tile going up and it dumps into there into the storm sewer. Okay. Would uh, the size of the machine too, horsepower, would that be determined? Well, we, we determine all that pretty much as a foundation is getting built. Your foundation, uh, how low it is in the ground, the water table, uh, if it's wet basement constantly, springs if you're sitting on a spring, uh, how much water when it rains flowing into the pit itself. I mean, this is just a third horsepower. The more water comes into it, you wanna have a larger pump to compensate for the water coming in. Make sure you have the right horsepower to get it away from your house. So every circumstance is different? Everyone's different. Okay, what does this do right here? That's a check valve. So as the sump pump turns on, Water will be pumping up through here and then out of your house. And then once the water level reaches a, a lower level to shut off, the, the head pressure won't come back down and fill your pit back up. It'll actually stop. Got it. And how often does a sump pump run? Does it go nonstop? It depends on everything. You're working on the water table, how much it's raining. But it's all automatic. There's it's nothing all, that I would automatic. need to do. No. And what if it feels like it's operating more than it usually does? What should I do? You want to make sure you check your gutters and downspouts. Make sure the water, is, when it's raining, is getting away from your house as much as possible instead of just pouring right back down your foundation and just recycling yourself over and over again. So this is not a remedy if you have a leaky basement. There are other things you need to do Correct. to get that water as far away as possible. Yeah. How much does a sump pump cost? I'm averaging from a decent one from $150 on up. Okay, and then I would imagine labor and things, if this is a new install, right. and we'd, there's other work to yeah, do. Yeah, we would have to give you a good estimate on and an idea of what's the best option for you. And then how long will it last? On average use, you know, 10 to 15 years. Okay. And you might want to think about replacing them. Are they energy efficient? Everything's getting more efficient these days. Um, a 20-year-old pump now is, is a lot more inefficient than the newer ones today. So if someone's sitting there with a 20-year-old sump pump in their basement, they may want to reassess mm, it. Yes. Okay, thanks. This is great information. You bet. For more cost-saving tips, go to our website, powerhousetv.com. Can you smell danger? If you detect the smell of rotten eggs, it could be a natural gas leak. Natural gas is a safe source of energy, but leaks can happen. Signs of a problem include the odor of rotten eggs, possibly paired with the sound or visual sounds of gas escaping. React quickly. Evacuate everyone from the home. Don't stop to look for the leak. Leave the area and call 1-800-ALLIANT or call 911. Smell gas? Move fast. We're always looking for unique and innovative ways to help make your home a little bit smarter. Here's a device that can stop the flow of water in your home if you get a leak. Plus, you can control it with your phone or voice. There are all types of devices out there. They range from hundreds of dollars to this one for about $50. Some other types are specific to water valves like the kind you find on your clothes washer. But this device is used on the water valves that use a lever to control the flow of water similar to what you would find with the main water supply of a home. That's where we're going to install this one. The setup is pretty simple. Just attach it to the water pipe using the clamp that comes with it. Make sure the robotic arm fits easily over the water shutoff lever. Plug it in and sync it up with your home's Wi-Fi network. You'll need to install the appropriate app so you can control the device. Once that's done, you're all set. So I just installed the smart water valve downstairs. Now let's test it out. Turn on the water here at the sink. Pull up my app. And with a push of the button and a swipe, the water is turning off. Now let's also see through my home assistant. Can I turn it back on? Alexa, valve on. and the water's coming back on through our home assistant and my voice. Just another great solution that you can make your house a powerhouse. Have you ever experienced a water leak? Pipes and appliances, especially those old ones, can spring a leak and cause significant damage and they can cost a lot of money to repair. Well, we found a nifty gadget that will help put your mind at ease. 
This is a smart water sensor. There are all types of them out there ranging from a few hundred dollars to this one at about $30. It's battery powered which can last for months and you can also monitor the battery life from your phone. Now in this case the water sensors are these three pegs right here. And there's also a convenient adapter that comes with this one. You slide that there. And then this little disc has a long cord so you can easily slide it into hard to reach spaces like under an appliance. So just figure out where you need it. Under a sink, next to your water heater, or even next to your sump pump. And then pair it up with a free downloadable app and whenever the sensor comes into contact with water, in this case it's a damp sponge, it will sound an audible alarm and you'll also be notified on your phone. Wi-Fi water leak sensors are just another way to give you peace of mind and make your house a powerhouse. Building a home from the ground up with energy efficiency in mind is a win for the homeowners. That's right, Megan. You saw how efficient a home can be with airtight seals, efficient air handling, on-demand hot water, and heat pumps. And you learned about some important maintenance every homeowner should do with their natural gas water heaters. Change out the anode rod every four to five years to lengthen the lifespan of your water heater. Plus, we learned just how important a sump pump is and how much energy it can cost homeowners during rainy days. And we installed some smart gadgets around the home to help us monitor and prevent water leaks. Also, you can make your house a powerhouse. <laughs>